Steve Carroll, what's the difference between Aussie estate agents and British estate agents? Talk to me. Absolute. Well, look, uh, I mean, obviously, as you can pick up from my accent, I'm English. I moved to Australia to, uh, what, 12 years ago to work for News Corp. And News Corp owns 63% of REA, which is the parent company of realestate.com. Dot au and um, it's really interesting because I've just sold our family property uh, only two or three uh, weeks ago uh, in in Rutland and uh, there is without question a big difference in uh, style and approach between selling real estate in Australia and the UK many many differences I'm look I'll, I'll just highlight a couple so one of the big one of the big ones is um, individual agents in Australia are encouraged to invest in themselves, to spend money on themselves, to build their brand, to train, to become more knowledgeable, to use social media, to, I suppose, build a personal brand mm -hmm. so they're recognised. So it's not unusual to see individual agents who might work for a franchise group like Rate Wide to be on a huge billboard at a roundabout or on the back of a bus stop or taking out personalised advertisements on realestate.com.au. Here in the UK, it strikes me that it's about the, the office rather than the individual. Yeah, so that's kind of one huge difference. The and the, the second difference I, I noticed is um, if I decide to sell a house in Australia, then the agent who comes in, who sits with me and discusses my marketing and discussing the price of the property, is the agent that holds your hand throughout the whole process. They're the one who will ring you two or three times a week and give you an update on, on how the marketing's worked in. Because you said to me when you sold your house in Rutland, you yeah. met the boss man the first time, but then you it, you're almost passed down the chain to, to these underlings. Well, well, absolutely. And you kind of, and I didn't like that, to be honest with you, you know, because I never felt as though I built up a relationship with an individual. Mm. And, and certainly, you know, one of the big things that I've noticed with working in real estate in Australia for the last 10 years or more is it's about building a relationship, the agent building a relationship with the seller, yeah? And, and what the agent is trying to do is the agent is trying to do such a good job for the seller that the seller will recommend that agent mm -hmm. to other people that might be selling their property uh, at some point in time. And it's not unusual to hear agents say, well, I've sold uh, three different properties for Christopher Watkins, yeah? Uh, two that belong to me, that he sold to me over a 10 year period. He also sold my mum's house, yeah? And, and, and it's that kind of personal one-on-one -on -one which doesn't seem to be the case here in the UK. Would it surprise you that only 12 or 14%, somewhere around that number, um, homeowners use the same agent that they bought through? Well, in, in the UK, it doesn't surprise me at all. And I don't know what the figure is in um, Australia, but I would guess it's higher because there's a real focus on that one-to-one -one with a goal of repeat business. You talked about um, self-development. I mean, my understanding is is that there's a big conference called ARIC once yep. a year. Uh, the tickets are over a thousand dollars, which is five six hundred pounds in in English money. And I've been told that most of the people there who are staff are paid for their own ticket. But in the UK, you don't get staff even spending any money on their own self-development. It's unheard of. Yeah. So there's a huge number of real estate coaches in Australia. So, I mean, you're familiar with Tom Panos, Josh Fegan, Lee Woodward, Michael Sheargold, Sherry Storer, there's plenty of them, Tanya Jones, there's plenty of them. And they are all doing very well, thank you. And they're all doing very well because um, it seems to be the norm that agents who want to go places will spend money on their own personal development. Now, that might be attending ARIC, which quite rightly is six, seven hundred pounds. It might be um, attending uh, Digital Live, which is a, a digital program that, that I run. It might be having one-on-one -on -one sessions with Lee Woodward or Michael Sheargold. Yeah? Even though they're an employee? Even though they're an employee. Now, look, let's be honest with you. I'm sure that an employee would uh, say to their principal, I'm gonna do this, will you go 50-50 with me or will you go 60-40? I'm sure that happens. And I'm sure there is assistance, 
but believe me, uh, individual agents in Australia uh, have a real hunger to learn and they uh, will attend at their own expense. Are most agents employed or self-employed? Bit of both. What, what, what roughly would you say? I would well, 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 so so uh, if you're part of a franchise group, and and, and look, franchise groups in, in in Australia would be around about sixty five percent. Then you would either be uh, fully employed or semi employed. Yeah, there's various different models. Yeah, and then obviously if you're not part of a franchise group, you're you're working for an independent. Yeah, and 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 again, a, 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 a similar a similar makeup. You see, in the UK, there's there's some new models coming on. I mean, when we say franchising, uh, there's firms like Belvoir and Martin and Co, where you basically just buy the brand name and give them ten percent of your turnover. Yeah. But there's some new ones coming in, like Keller Williams. Yeah. Uh, where basically you're a self-employed person yes. and, and you get to keep seventy, eighty percent. Do Do you have such models? Yep. In In Oz, what What would you say to any Brits? Who, who want to potentially go self-employed but are a bit scared to make that jump? Well, I, I, this is my view. I mean, obviously, my area of expertise is um, digital, social media. And, and I think if there's ever a time, Chris, to make that leap, it's now. Because it's so much easier now to build a profile and name for yourself because of social media. So if you think about 10 or 12 years ago, to build your own personal brand would be bloody expensive because you had newspapers mm. and, and other outdoor type of advertising. But when you think about platforms like LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook, uh, if you're really clever and you're smart and you're curious and inquisitive about how those platforms work, you can actually really build a personal brand for yourself. Now, what we're seeing in Australia, and we talked about this offline, we're seeing many, many agents putting a lot of energy and effort into building their own personal profile. Now, that that isn't particularly in all cases going down well with the, the franchise groups okay. or the principal, uh, because you've got this, you've got this kind of, not, it's not a battle, but you've got this battle, let's just use that word, between the office brand and the individual. Mm. And what you said here in the UK, 95% mm. is office. I would say in Australia, 65%, 70% is the individual, 30% is, is the office brand. And, and the owners of those office brands are saying, well, we want, we, we, want, we want to readdress the balance. Maybe in the next video, we could talk about that. Yep. Thank you.